Welcome to Fullerton College Football on Sportsnet, USA.net, as we open up the conference between San Bernardino Valley College and your Fullerton College Hornets. Hi, I'm Mark Pavlovich, along with Ryan Osborne, Corey Nalen. We are the voices of Fullerton College Football. And Mr. Osborne, this is a night that if the Hornets stumble, well, conference is over before it even began. They need to come out strong, tough, mean, and angry and put the beaten down on San Bernardino. Well, you talk about that, Mark. Something you mentioned before the broadcast kind of sticks out. When you talk about conference, all it takes is one loss in conference, and all of a sudden you're looking at everyone else hoping that you can get some help. This is a matchup that Fullerton College can't sleep on because of how much ground you'd have to gain throughout the rest of the conference schedule. And we look at it, Corey Nalen back deep. It's going to be camera. I think it's going to be Michael Love and maybe standing next to him, Christian Cross. So the Hornets will receive to start this game off as we're ready for conference play here on Sportsnet USA.net. Christian Cross going to take it at the eight, fumbles it at the three, turns the corner, looks to go upfield, hits the seam, and if he stays on his feet, Mr. Nalen, he's off and running. Yeah, but Jaden Bird did a nice job of keeping him off of his feet and bringing them up, and it should be interesting how the defense plays for San Bernardino Valley because they are short staff. Some of these players you might see going both ways and see how that affects them coming in in the second half of the game. Josh Calvin is not coming out at quarterback. It's Brandon Nunez at quarterback for the Hornets. You look at Brandon completing 43% of his passes this season will start right there at quarterback for the Hornets. First down and 10 at the 23. So something we don't normally see on the field. We didn't hear anything about Josh Calvin. So we think maybe this is just a little change. Straight dive. It looks like they handed that off to Malik Winston who starts in the backfield at running back. Malik comes out quickly. So he carries it on the first time out. And the running back now is going to be Tyrell Green Jr. with a gain of six inches. Franklin to the near side of the field. Nunez still at quarterback. Second down. Easily going here. We'll see what happens. They get a lot of motion up. Give it to Tyrell Green Jr. Stays on his feet. Gets across the 23. And gets bringing up a third down and a long seven for the Hornets. Let's get that defensive front for the Wolverines, Rashad Pinota, Dimitri Scott, Stephen Williams is a linebacker, J.J. Centinelli also up front, Joshua Hughes at the secondary, Krajan Norman is another corner, Dante Bird is one corner, wearing number eight in blue, Mark, go ahead. Big third down and seven. Nunez goes back, has time, middle of the field, goes there, balls up, knocked away and almost caught as he went straight on a steam route and Cameron Woods could not come down with it. Good coverage by Braden Horseman, five, Horstman, 5'10", freshman out of Norco. So a three and out, exactly what the Wolverines needed to start this ball game. Cornelius Gardner back deep for the Wolverines. He'll stand at the 40. As the Hornets don't get anything on their first drive except a few yards. So let's see if the Wolverines can take advantage of it here in the first quarter on Sportsnet, USA.net. Gardner waits for it. Back pedals. He's going to let it bounce. It's going to take a hornet hop, spins, and touch down at the 22. So with 12, 57 to go. Well, it's the Hornets nothing. The Wolverines getting ready to come on offense. Ryan Osborne, Corey Nalen, Corey, Wolverines, good defensive stand on the first plays for the Hornets. Yeah, exactly three and out is what they needed. And the first touch on that punt mark was hit by a Hornet right on the top of the helmet at the 40. So instead of getting first down and 10 from the 20, they get first down and 10 at the 40. That's why I have the young eyes next to me. It's Corey Nealon caught that. So it'll be first down and 10 at the 40. First and 10 for your Wolverines at their own 40 yard line. DeMarcus Avery Jr. in at quarterback for the Wolverines. 
straight dive off the left side. Ball comes out. Fumble on the play. Hornets pick it up. Turn at the 50, going upfield, getting taken down and thrown out of bounds at the 47. So a turnover quickly for the Hornets on a nice little fumble tackle and pick up by Kearns for the Hornets. Yeah, Hunter Bettler make, the, uh, gets the fumble, or, and then Kasias Kearns picks it up, Mark. You couldn't tell who dislodged the ball from Bettler. So Ryan Osborne said it was Chris Harm who dislodged the football. Nunez comes back out of quarterback. So we're just assuming that there's something wrong with Josh Calvin. He's you, not out there. You remember he was hurt in the last game against El Camino. He was. Tyrell Green Jr. takes it off the left side, goes off tackle, stays on his feet, gets to the 40, struggles to get out of bounds. He does that at the 38. You know what I love about Tyrell Green Jr. when he runs the ball? He's always running up the field even when he's running laterally. You watch that. He cuts to the outside but a yard up. One more cut, another yard up. He picks up eight yards after he's running laterally for four. C.J. Broy and Koenig to the near side of the field. Kristen Stewart with him. Second down and two. Tyrell Green Jr. goes in motion. Nunez flips it over here. Misses just a little on the pass and Corey Nealon. Stewart stopped. The pass looked like he should have kept moving. Miscommunication, if, if you will. Mark William Peroni is the center for the Hornets. The right guard will be George Dua. And the right tackle is going to be Sebastian Medina. We'll get the left side in just a moment. Third down and two for the Hornets right at the 38. They give it to Tyrell Green Jr. He struggles his way. Ball comes out. We'll see who's got it. Hornets say they do. They hold on to it, but it's going to be enough for a first down right at the 35. Sebastian Medina gets the jumps on the loose ball. And getting the start at left tackle tonight is Daniel Modellis for the Hornets. And the left guard, as always, is going to be Sammy Garcia. Franklin Koenig to the near side of the field. Cameron Woods comes in as a tight end right off a tackle on the right side. First down and 10. They hand it straight up the middle. Ball comes out. Malik Winston has it stripped from him, and it's a turnover, another turnover by the Hornets. And the middle of that defensive front for the Wolverines, two good pushes in a row. Two drops by the running backs. This one is lost. And this is the game plan to start off if the Wolverines want it. So the Hornets are stumbling and bumbling their way. Guys, if we'd have driven up here like the way they're playing right now, we'd still be on the freeway. Avery Jr. comes in at quarterback. Hunter Beatler in at running back for the Wolverines. Avery rolls out, nobody's gonna contain him. He slides down at the 42, near line, so marks him there. You know what guys, those two fumbles back to back by Fullerton are more than I remember them having over the last two weeks. Yeah, the, rough, the running backs haven't fumbled this year mm -hmm. that I can recall. Neither can I. I can't think of, a, of another time that they had. David Pollard in the shot, shot, I can't even say slot. I'm so upset. Ramsey, near side of the field. Quarterback keeps it himself. Once again, Avery goes down and gets a first down and it's a running quarterback, Corey Nalen, that the defense has not stayed at home yet to get. So the ends, Carlos. Torres gets the start on the left end, and that's where they First win. Bryce ten. Dunnick and Ant Harris on the inside. Blake Hill is the right that's edge. Luke field. Smith gets the start. Left linebacker, Marcellus Gaines. Or excuse me, Branson Tita Noir. Um, and then Chris Harm the middle. First down and 10 for the Hornets at midfield. Yeah, we're out of oxygen up here. Every goes back. Here it comes. He's going to get sacked at the 38-yard line. Dunnett came through, Hill came through, Torres came through, making up for those two quarterback runs to pick up the first down. Previously, LeBaron Kennedy Jr. now in for Carlos Torres. The secondary 
Salen Streeter and Kadari Kearns are the safeties. Near side corner will be Kasayas Kearns, and the far side corner for the Hornets is Christian Cross. Avery quarterback, Beatler running back. Ramsey to the near side of the field. Second and 21, right at the 41. Avery goes back, here comes a prefer. Steps away from the pressure, looking to go down the field. He's gonna run it again, sidesteps one, gets hit. He's going to get a nice gain of 12 yards as his helmet comes off. That means he should have to leave the field, which he does. So it's gonna bring up a third down and nine as he leaves the field. Unless the Wolverines use a timeout. They use a timeout, he can come back in. So the Wolverines are trying to figure out what they wanna do. They're gonna call that timeout, which and by calling the timeout, that allows the quarterback to come back on the field even though he lost his helmet. Here on Sportsnet, USA.net. Ryan Osborne, Corey Nalen, I'm telling you what, I couldn't get the words out. Corey stumbled for a second. Ryan, I think the juju's coming up this direction. Uh, whatever the Hornets haven't done, it's affecting us already here on SportsNetUSA.net. You know, it's funny because the last few weeks that we watched this Hornet team, we continually see a feeling out process in the first quarter. So far in this one, it just seems like neither team is really set mentally for this matchup. You look at the previous two series for both of these two squads, and you're seeing a lot of mistakes mentally when you get up to the line of scrimmage and then also a little bit of mis miscommunication in terms of what play call is on. So when you look at both of these two squads in the early going, it's like you were talking about, Mark. Coming out of the gate, neither of these two teams look as clean as we have seen them in the past. Well, you look at DeMarcus Avery at quarterback, DeMarcus Avery Jr. at quarterback, 17 attempts, four completions for a total of 21 yards this season. A young man that can run, maybe not necessarily throw the football. DeMarcus Avery Jr. back out at quarterback. Beatler running back. Going to stack three people to the near side of the field. Ramsey is over here. So it'll be a third down and a long eight from the 48. The Hornets are coming. They've got the bead on there, and they all meet at the 40, Courtney Allen. It looked like they were having a picnic. Luke Smith came in from the outside from his linebacker spot. Blake Hill on his edge rush spot on the right side met at the quarterback. They both get a half a sack there. Ryan Crooks realizes it's not a passing game that they're comfortable with, so let's bring the pe pressure and force their hand. Aiden Koenig comes in. He'll return for the Hornets. So it's going to be fourth and 19 at the 40-yard line. High snap, lots of pressure. Kick gets off with the left foot, and they go get away, get away, get away. Guys, I tell you what, it was amazing that that kicker even got the ball off against the Hornets. Yeah, good athleticism there the by Patras. And again, both teams, you feel that out, but one of these teams, Fullerton especially, has to get out of the habit of feeling the other team out and have to come ready to play at all times. So first down and 10 at the 40. And of course, change at quarterback, Taj Gregory comes in the game. So it's gonna be Gregory at quarterback, Tyrell Green Jr., the running back. First down and 10 at the 40. So Taj Gregory fakes it, takes it himself, goes up the middle, goes forward, gets a gain of a long three on the play. You like him as a running quarterback for that Hornet team. No, yes. And he is that running quarterback for the Hornets. And uh, it, if you can get him on the outside, he can do some good things. We watch film on him, especially at the high school level, you watch some film. When he gets on the outside, he can make good decisions. So Taj stays in there. They hand it off to Tyrell Green Jr. Gets a gain of two. He keeps going. They're finally gonna mark him down at the, about the 47 is where they're gonna say. It's gonna bring up a third down and three for the Hornets. They moved it back a half a yard. Yeah, he, his momentum was stopped there at the 47. And it's again, the handoff was a little shaky. He handed off to the armpit because it looked like he wanted to keep it on the read option. Broy and Koenig to the near side of the field. 
Stewart on the slot, left side of the field. They hand it off to Tyrell Green Jr. Hits off a left tackle, falls forward for a first down with a nice gain of nine on the play. And good job getting to the second level. As into the ball game, Javier Sandoval Corral, who is one of the starting offensive linemen. Again, with only about 30 players for San Bernardino Valley, they'll play a lot of offense and defense. You don't see that much, but the, out of necessity. This time, Tosh keeps it himself, goes on a quarterback option, gets across the original line of scrimmage, gain of two on the play. Taj listed at 6'8", 210 out of Coppell, Texas. Make it 230. But out of Coppell, Texas, hasn't had a, a lot of time in the first four game, first five games. 6'24 to go here in the first quarter. So we're gonna flip flop. Will Gibson comes our direction, near side of the field. Stewart comes with him. Broy and Coney go to the far side of the field. Tyrell Green Jr., the running back. Second down and seven. They go to Tyrell Green Jr., they throw it to him, but it does nothing because it's a bad throw. He catches it and goes down for a loss on the play. And with your backup quarterback and your third string quarterback gonna be playing in tonight's game, Coach Campbell looks to be a loss little bit hesitant to open up that playbook and go downfield. So the run game is really gonna have to be supportive for the Hornets. Some noise. So big third down and nine. The 43 for the Hornets. Option play with the quarterback. Gets to the 40. Gain of four. And they're going to punt the ball away one more time. So three times the offense has touched the ball. Three times the offense has done zero on the field here on Sportsnet USA. Dot net. Good job by Stephen Williams, forcing Gregory to turn and back up the field, the 5'9 sophomore from Serrano, and Rashad Pinota coming Four back into the game, the making line. the tackle after a gain of two. Cornelius Gardner back for the Wolverines. He's going to stand at the 10-yard line. No pressure. Off the side of the foot. It's a shank job. And goes out at the 24-yard line. You ever seen any of us pull off a golf shot? That's like on the first hole at Bray Golf Course. Corey's up in the parking lot, I'm down in the ravine, and Ryan Osborne's like five feet off the tee. That was a beautiful shank going out of bounds. Problem is, Mark, it's the ninth hole. <laughs> <laughs> well, the Hornets are just about at the third hole so far and haven't done much in this game. DeMarcus Avery Jr comes back out at quarterback. Jamar Williams now in at running back for the Wolverines. Quarterback keeps it. Quarterback option, fakes inside, cuts the outside. Nice gain of one on the play. He should have been dropped for a loss. Out athletes defensive line, Robert De La Torre up front who played well, didn't bite on the fake, but again, the athleticism of Avery Jr. gets around the corner and makes positive yardage. It goes back to what you were talking about with Tyrell Green. Even when he's going laterally, same thing with Avery here. When he's going laterally, he's still moving his feet towards upfield, has his body positioned towards upfield as well. Jackson to the near side of the field, Tinsley to the far side of the field. Little movement up in front, looking to come over here. Does, and if you're playing the football, not the man, it was thrown up for a possibility of a pick. Yeah, there was that possibility. Kearns opportunistic this season. A couple fumble recoveries and interception. Had his eyes on a hit, but again, the throw was a little bit off because he had two receivers, David Pollard and DeMarco Jackson on the same side in the same area. DeMarcus Avery Jr. stays in at quarterback. Beatler stays now back in at running back. Tinsley now comes to the near side of the field with Ramsey. Third down and nine. Quarterback's gonna keep it himself. Tries to find an opening. He gets up to the 30. They're gonna mark him at the 31 yard line. It's gonna bring up a fourth down. We'll be very honest with you. Unfortunately, San Bernardino a little depleted because of injuries and the Hornets don't have their starting quarterback in there 
and it is showing on both sides of the offense for both these teams. They're still a little disappointed on how Fullerton has come out, lackluster and not into this ball game yet. Aiden Koenig back deep with 335 to go here in the first quarter. High snap. Punter takes off on his own and he's got room to run. Stays there, goes the outside, steps out. At the 45, let's move the chains. Heads up play by, and I wasn't sure, I want to make sure. At first I thought it was Joshua Hughes back there. No, he looked like it was Brian Batras. Batras instead of, okay, thank you, Mr. PA. So it's Batras, not Batras. So Batras does a nice job. You saw him roll out the first time to make the kick. Fullerton came with the house. He rolled out a second time and realized, I got a whole bunch of greenery in front of me. Well, and, so, and the rollout is, Ryan, as you know, that's what a rugby kicker does. Well, that's the thing. When you guys look at it, it seemed like he was initially sold for the kick. He approached it, got his leg in position, took a peek up and saw that all of the Hornets were in the backfield, and that's when he took off, once he realized he wasn't going to be able to get that kick away. End around, ball down the middle of the field. If it's on the money, it would be right there. I tell you what, David Pollard was all by himself on a reverse to the flanker who then flings it down the field and that was Rashawn Ramsey putting up. Corey, if he puts it on the money, that's touchdown. You know, I like the play call. Fullerton secondary, they were kind of in position, but a better throw would have been a completed pass after 20. Or a better route, either one. Nice play, nice creativity from the Wolverines. Tinsley goes to the far side of the field. Pollard in the slot next to him, the person that just missed catching that. Avery, here comes the run again. Avery's in the backfield, but he doesn't have the football as they hand it off to Beatler, and Beatler gets it all the way up to the 49, gain of four on the play. I smell cigar. <laughs> Unfortunately. Corey smells it too. Somebody didn't hear that notice. Yeah, exactly. Thank you. Third and seven. The Hornets jump. Free play. Avery takes off, slides, and it should be five yards against the Hornets. So instead of that third and seven, makes it third and two and manageable. And the way Avery Jr. is using his legs, you're looking at a first down if he uses them and picks it up. LeBaron Kennedy Jr. into the ball game on the right side in end, I should say, in the middle is going to be in Tyler Carter, right, number 94 in white. Number 60 in white is, <coughs> excuse me, Robert De La Torre. So the Wolverines are across midfield. Ramsey to the near side of the field. In the slot next to him is Beatler. Demarcus Avery Jr. all alone in that backfield. Here he comes, here comes the pressure. He looks for the outside. The end comes in, he gives him the corner. First down, horrible defense by the Hornets. And C.J. Nesmith was the end on that side and Brian Crooks is not happy with him because he bit hard, came straight down and allowed Avery Jr. to get outside. He's out, in comes Hill. But again, that was a design play to go to the outside, hoping that the defensive end doesn't do their job and they didn't. Ryan Osborne's having a good time back here, not seeing much, just listening to the old guy complain. Demarcus Avery Jr. at quarterback. Wolverines at the 43, they're on the move. With 1.15 to go, nobody's on the board. They throw it over here, and it's a fastball down in the dirt. Incomplete pass on the play. Demarcus Avery Jr. coming into this game, 23% is what he completes in a game. And that one is incomplete. It's going to bring up a second down and 10 right at the 42-yard line. And you don't mind that incompletion that because Kadari Kearns was closing fast. An on-target throw looked like it was going to be picked or at least deflected in the very least. Ramsey to the near side of the field. Pollard in the slot next to him. Far side of the field is going to be Jackson. Demarcus Avery Jr. at quarterback. Here comes the pressure, straight up the middle. Throws it up for grabs, nobody's there. Incomplete pass. So it's gonna bring up a third down and 10 as Brian Crooks is saying, hey guys, if you can't just play standard defense, 
just all of you go after the quarterback. We'll meet there for a meeting. Yeah, especially with the quarterback who doesn't have the reps this season and hasn't been able to plant his feet to make a good throw. He, I mean, he did bring the house. All four defensive linemen, two of the linebackers dropped one of the, one of the linebackers for safety help. But again, they're one-on-one -on, -one on the outside. Tavon Tinsley goes to the far side of the field. He'll be there with Jackson. Avery goes back, looks to go. Ball gets knocked down and battered. Are they going to call it a fumble? It should be an incomplete pass, and now it is called incomplete. And what? I couldn't tell if that was Blake Hill who volleyballed that one or Marcel Branson, Tito, and the Y. It could have been any number of Fullerton Hornet arms. So that's going to bring it up. And, of course, I'm with, uh, you know, 52 seconds to go. There's an awfully quiet gentleman on our left over here. You know what? I'm gonna. I gotta get the fish hook out and get him to say something instead of just smiling at me during this whole first quarter. You know what, Mark? It's watching both of these two teams. It's interesting when you go back to something you said earlier, and I'll get to it after this fourth down play. So the Wolverines, fourth down and ten. They got nothing to lose. See if they can get the Hornets to jump. Demarcus Avery Jr. at quarterback, Beatler at running back. They double stack. And we're going to get timeout, and then we're going to get delay of game against the Wolverines. But it goes back to something you were talking about earlier, Mark. Neither of these team, two teams look like they were in this game to start, especially here in the first quarter. You're looking at the simple mistakes that we're not used to from both of these two sides. Look at Fullerton, two fumbles from their running backs. We haven't seen that in weeks. You look at the defense for Fullerton, not getting up into the backfield like we're used to. Ball goes on the ground. This time, can they get it off? Kick goes off. It's going to get kicked out of bounds right at the 47-yard line. I don't care if that was kicked back to the line of scrimmage. That's a good job by Batras of just getting the ball off <laughs> after the poor snap. I mean, and not getting it blocked with the player in his face. Go ahead, Ryan. <laughs> No, it just goes back to what you were you you were talking about, Mark. Neither of these two teams look crisp. We're look we're used to Fullerton uh, College coming honestly, out. Honestly, they look like they don't want to be here. <laughs> Brandon Nunez, one of the ones that is here, comes out on the field. Tyrell Green Jr. standing behind him. That was Corey Naylor who made that <laughs> statement here on SportsNetUSA.net. Tyrell Green Jr. up the middle gets a gain of one on the play. No, but Corey, I mean, when you when you talk about that, we've seen Fullerton have really nice opening drives, or at least a first quarter where they get up the field. Maybe they don't convert it into points, but they get yardage. And their first three series so far, at least offensively, and a little bit on the defense too, we haven't seen them perform like they have to start off games, at least throughout the last four weeks. Koenig and Broy to the near side of the field. Nunez at quarterback, second down and nine, goes back, flips it across the middle, it goes to Koenig, cuts it to 50, stays on his feet, turns inside. Aiden Koenig, the sure hands, says Ryan Osborne, somebody came to play tonight, first down Hornets. Elijah Bird and Braden Horseman with the tackle for the Wolverines. A nice simple play, a little square in to one receiver, try to get your quarterback a little bit of rhythm in this series, quarter, get some positive no yardage score. on this series. Even if they don't score, you want to get across the 50 or the 40 or the 30. Matter of fact, you do want to score. So that brings us to the end of the first quarter. As we come to the end of the first quarter, well, nothing's going on out here at San Bernardino Valley College, but football will happen as it's the Hornet zero, the Wolverine zero here on Sportsnet, USA.net. Ryan Osborne, Corey Nealon, and the old guy, happy to bring you this community college football game on SportsnetUSA.net. Next Friday night, right around the corner, a little Cypress volleyball on Sportsnet USA. This coming Friday Tomorrow. on SportsnetUSA.net. I know. Well, the drive out here made me feel like it's a week away. <laughs> you had me thinking, wow, I thought the game was tomorrow. <laughs> Darian Fletcher comes to the near side of the field. Nunez still at quarterback. First down and 10, just at the 40. Nunez goes back, goes the middle of the field, overshoots. 
the receiver right there, and he had Koenig, Corey. If he puts her on the money, lets him run underneath the ball, it's touchdown Hornets. Quarterback hurry by Stephen Williams out of Serrano High School in Thielen. It was 5'9", 189. Puts the pressure, not allowing Nunez to step into the throw that he wanted to make, and that's why it was off target. Well, and it also a little bit goes back to what you guys were talking about. You have your second and third string guys at quarterback, second not necessarily down. the chemistry or the type of ball that they're used to with those specific receivers. Broy and Koenig to the near side of the field. Tyrell Green Jr. in the backfield. Nunez at quarterback, second down and 10 at the 40. He goes back, throws it this time to C.J. Broy. C.J. Broy tries to get a block. Are they gonna give it the first down to him or is he just short? Ryan Osborne says, move the chains, baby. So let's move them past the 30. Just the start of the second quarter, no score in this game. Neither team has found offense on the field. First and 10, just across the 30. Tyrell Green Jr. off a right tackle and goes there. We're going to get that yellow hanky. That means this one's coming back. And Tyrell Green Jr. is injured as he went in and laid a hit on the defensive back. And he's the one who comes up a little bit shaky. And there is a flag on the back end. Looks like it's gonna be holding against the Hornets. We got, hopefully he's okay as he gets up and runs off of his own power. Rushing play by number 13, Tyrell Green. And Ryan, that's what happens sometimes when you're that physical guy who doesn't avoid the contact and initiate contact. But I mean, when you take a look at Tyrell Green, he's not just your leading running back on this team. He's also one of the top three running backs in the state of California by stats, yardage per game, and overall total yardage as well. Malik Winston now in at running back. Nunez rolls that direction, throws, drops it right there to Koenig. Koenig gets the penalty back plus five. So it'll bring up a second down and five for the Hornets. Should be right at the 25. Nunez looked real comfortable rolling out and making that throw. Going to flip the field. Franklin comes to the near side of the field. Koenig's going to be in the slot in the near side of the field. Second down and five at the 25. Give to Malik Winston. Malik goes straight up the middle, right off guard. Going to get a gain of two. Boy, and the whistles are sort of late during all these scrums going out here. Williams in on the stop. This might be a good chance for Malik Winston to get a lot of time in the backfield on a lot of carries. Tackled by number 33. So they're only giving him a yard. So Nunez goes back. Winston stays in at quarterback. Koenig in the slot over here. Broy to the far side of the field. They fake it to Winston. Going down deep to Koenig. Koenig! Touchdown, Hornets! Perfectly placed ball by Nunez, stood in the pocket and threw it up to only where Koenig can make the catch. An excellent defense by Malik Reed, who was all over him, doesn't make contact. But Koenig, as we say with every wide receiver here for Fullerton, has the best hands on the team. So the Hornets, with 12.53 to go, get on the board as Nunez goes to the sure hands for this Hornets football team. And that's the thing, when you mentioned sure hands and talking about the best hands on this team, we talked about him last week against El Camino. He has a lot of resemblance to Marcus Grossman when Marcus played here, where anything in the vicinity, as long as it was in the relative area of the receiver, he will fight and make sure that he has the inside position to give himself the best opportunity to make a catch. Fulbert makes the point after, so it's the Hornets seven. The Wolverine zero here on Sportsnet USA. Dot net. Of course, Corey Nalen was going through, hey, if you had to take receivers, who would you take? We played that game last week here on SportsnetUSA.net. Well, we did it at home, though. Yeah, we were talking about the best, put, best receivers. You need three, three receivers to take since the time we've been calling games here at Fullerton College. And it's a hard three to take. And it would actually is going to change every time you ask that question. I'll throw it over to Ryan. If you had to make have three receivers from Fullerton from the time you've been with us. 
it'd be interesting who you would who you would pick. Off the top of my head, DeAndre McNeil, Marcus Grossman, and you know what? Give me a guy who not only could play receiver but also would give you some help on the special teams. Give me Justin Manyweather. Wow. Ah, okay, okay. Ramsey and Gardner back deep for the Wolverines who are trailing by seven with 12.53 to go here in the first half. Big, deep kick taken right there by Gardner. They're going to go back, throw it to the opposite side of the field. Trick plays. The Wolverines are coming out with trick plays, trying to find something. And Corey Nalen, trickery seems to be the thing during this Halloween month. But you know what? When you take a look at the spacing they had once that pass goes off to that far side, it was there. There was only one Fullerton College Hornet who was there in coverage. So if that sets up a little bit quicker, they have a lot of extra room and greenery to work on that far sideline. Yeah, I couldn't tell if it, because there were two number sixes out there, Mark. So I, I think it was Rashawn Ramsey throwing it over and it's Hunter, to Hunter Beitler to make that. And that's because I think, because of so many players, or so little players on Saddleback, uh, Saddleback, San Bernardino is why they allowed that. DeMarcus Avery Jr. back in at quarterback. Gardner now in at running back for the Wolverines. So you got Gardner now. Scat back back there. They hand it off to Gardner. Gardner gets through the hole, squeaks his way out for a gain of five on the play. Cornelius 5'7", 160 out of Redlands Valley East. Cornelius Gardner. Cornelius, sorry, Mark. See, I like the PA guy sometimes. So Gardner comes out. Near side of the field is Ramsey. Gardner stays in at running back. This time it's going to be Avery keeping it himself. Gets hung up at the line of scrimmage. He had a hole to run. They're going to give him a gain of, well, I'm going to say, Two, it's going to bring up a long four right at the 29 Bryce for the Dunnick. Wolverines. Oh, sorry, Mark. Bryce Dunnick makes the tackle. He's had an excellent season thus far. Coach Robinson told us Bryce Dunnick and Aunt, Aunt Harris has had a really solid uh, season thus far on the inside. Pollard in the slot on their side. Tinsley right behind him. Hornets come up. Quarterback rolls out, looking for a play. Go. Flips it down the middle of the field. Picked off right there for the Hornets. And a nice little defensive play made by Salem Streeter. Mark, and he's got two interceptions for a return for a touchdown. That's his third of the game. And remember, he's basically playing with one good, arm, one good hand, one good arm, and still makes a catch. So they're going to mark it out at the 42. And you see the way he broke on the ball with the receipt with the throw. It hung up just a little bit and realized he had enough time because he had blanket, blanket coverage to react better on the ball. Malik Winston comes in at running back. Nunez at quarterback. Broy and Koenig to the near side of the field. Gibson to the far side of the field. First down and 10 at the 42 for the Hornets. Up by seven. Nunez goes back. Throws across the middle of the field. Gets a ride there to Gibson. Gibson catches it at the 35, then it's taken down. And they don't give him. Now, are they going to say he retreated yes, on his own, did. so he, that's why they're marking it back? Yeah, he doesn't get forward progress on that. He retreated trying to make a move. And then his own player, George Dua, lays him out for the tackle. Nunez, nine, so it's going to be a gain of six instead of a gain of eight. Second down at four at the 38, Second Nunez. Down. Goes back, once again, goes across, Koenig, across the middle of the field, cuts back in, Koenig goes the outside of the field, zigs and zags his way all the way to the 14 yard line. Aiden Koenig looks like the energizer that this team needs in this first half. 22 yards, on, and again, nice, simple catch. Little square in, good time to throw, makes a good throw, and Koenig does the rest. Nunez looks over. Malik Winston still in at running back. Gibson comes to the near side of the field. Stewart comes with him in the slot. Broy and Koenig to the far side of the field. First down and 10 at the 15. Nunez looks, goes over to Malik Winston who just takes it in 
Touchdown Hornets. Touchdown Hornets. Malik Winston coming out of the backfield, finally having a pass thrown to him, shows his speed to get into the end zone, Ryan Osborne. And Malik Winston does something we've talked about all season coming out of the backfield. But you know what, at the end of the run there, Mark, what you like to see from Winston is that he identified where the defender was, and went right into him, didn't try to go and out finagle his way. And well, what we've seen recently from all community college athletes, or at least a lot of them, is they try and get to the end zone by using their footwork, trying to get too fancy with it. They end up getting dropped before they get to uh, the goal line. Instead, what you saw from Winston is what he described to us on the coaches show. If he can find contact, he'll run into it. And so he does exactly that to get across the goal line. And he does. And the Hornets are now up 14 to nothing here in the second quarter with 10.05 to go. It's your Hornets 14, the Wolverine zero here on Sportsnet, USA.net. Well, the sputtering in the first quarter has gone away and it looks like maybe there's sensibility on the offensive side, and we'll see if it continues during this entire game. Tavon Tinsley is going to be back deep for the Wolverines with Jackson. So it's gonna be Tinsley and Jackson back deep for San Bernardino. They're gonna stand at the 10 as the Hornets now are up 14 to nothing with 10.05 to go here in the second quarter on Sportsnet, USA.net. So a little more energy by this Fuller to College team, and now they've seemed to have found something. Deep kick, taken there, out of bounds. It's gonna go all the way out as Jackson sort of eyed it and decided not to take it. So it'll be first down and 10 on the 25. Corey Nalen, well, we know somebody should be listening to us or following us. Uh, you know, Ray, if you're out there, Curry was going to give you a shout out. I figured I'd beat it to it. You know, uh, let's see. What did Jerry tell us to uh, tell Ray? Ryan, do you remember? I think uh, off was, the top of my head, I can. I think he was talking about the attractive attractiveness of Ray. Is that what he was saying? I, I think so. <laughs> Ray, we love you. You beautiful man. I think that's exactly what Jerry was telling no matter us. What, no matter what Jerry says. <laughs> he said you look good in a robe. Uh, that, that's as far as I'm going. So DeMarcus Avery Jr. comes back out at quarterback. First down and 10 at the 25. Beater goes out there, throws it to him in the flat. Catches it on the dead run. It's a foot race. He gets taken down at the 50. They take the running back, put him out in the flat. One on one against two. And the running back makes the big gain on the play. All the way out to the 50 yard line. The largest play of the night for the Wolverines, first down and 10 at midfield. Jackson comes to the near side of the field, Pollard in the slot next to him, first down and 10 at the 50. Wolverines with 9.38 to go are trying to answer here in the second quarter. Goes back, steps up against it, feels the pressure behind Tinsley who's coming on a crossing pattern and can't get the ball to him. And as the game goes by, Avery Jr. might realize that he'll have enough time if he gets out of the pocket for his receivers to get open, especially when he recognizes the zone. Uh, new safety in is Anthony Wilson, number 31 for the Hornets. Keon Marshall, the new middle backer, wearing 5-2 in white. Up front, Terrence Hansborough Jr. along with Tyler Carter, the Baron Kennedy Jr. and C.J. Nesbitt. Jackson to the near side of the field. Inside him is going to be Pollard. Tinsley goes to the far side of the field. Beatler stays at running back. Dive play, off left tackle to him. He's going to get again a four all the way down to the 46 yard line. Met head up by Keon Marshall out of Brea Olinda High School. So it should bring up a third down and six, which it does. Far side corner for the Hornets, Ronald McFoy. And so I apologize, it's Beitler is what they're saying. I said Beatler. I was Sorry. calling him Beitler earlier, so. 
So Beitler is now in the slot at the far side of the field. Marcus Avery Jr. all by himself in the backfield. Here comes the pressure. He's going to try and outrun it. Gets away from one. Throws a pitch shot, and it goes out of bounds. Hornets can't keep the foot in. If they would have, it would have been an interception, and that's going to bring up fourth down. On the chase down, Mark, LeBaron Kennedy Jr., Tyler Carter, and Keon Marshall all have their sights on Avery Jr., and that's just a good job of getting the ball away and not getting the sack. So 8.35 to go. It's the Hornets 14, the Wolverine zero here on Sportsnet, USA.net. C.J. Broy back deep for the Hornets. Broy will stand right at the 10-yard line. Got to stay at home if you're the attacking team. Rugby kick. Goes out, C.J. Broy says, here it comes. Going to take a little roll in favor of the Wolverines. Backtracks to about the 14-yard line in the market down there with 8.23 to go. It's the Hornets, 14. The Wolverines, zero here on Sportsnet, USA.net. And, Mark, you're talking about the rugby kick, and we've seen it a lot more at the college level in recent years. But in order to get that successful rugby kick to end up happening, what you want to do is kick the ball from the middle towards the top as you're moving forward and sideways. Because if you end up getting a little bit too much back on it, it's going to backspin and deaden as soon as it gets to contact. You go with a low line drive, make sure you hit the top of it so that way it's spinning forward and those bounces will start helping you out as it keeps rolling its way downfield. So Nunez back on the field. Franklin comes to the near side of the field with Koenig. Malik Winston still at running back. First down, they hand it off to Malik, hits the middle of the field, right off the center's right side, gain of one on the play. And Citanelli with the tackle. So it's going to bring up second and a long nine for the Hornets. Gibson comes to the near side of the field. Stewart with him. Nunez looks to his right, steps away from the pressure. Going to put down his shoulder, stumbles forward, and he should be about two yards short on the play. Robert Eggleston comes up and makes the field. And that's exactly what he is. So it's going to bring up a third down and two right at the 23. They've got to get to the 25 for a first down. Defense crawls up. Here they come, off left tackle. Malik Winston runs over one, runs over two, stays on his feet. Ryan Osborne, I guess Malik was listening to you when you said seek out the contact. And what's the old cliche about that, Mark? A grown man run? Because he ends up taking his shoulder, getting lower than his defender, and keeps his momentum going. It's the fact that he dropped his entire body. His center of gravity goes down, and the low guy is able to get the leverage to be able to go forward. Hornets come out. They hand it straight up the middle. One more time. Going to gain a three. So the running attack is going on now. The Hornets are going to stick with it. Bird again on the stop. He was joined by Oscar Franco. And this is a good job by, by Malik Winston to get these reps. In this ball game, especially. So Broy and Koenig come near us. Nunez at quarterback. Winston at the running back. Second down, I'm going to say a long six, right at 42. Nunez didn't look like he was ready. Flicks it towards the field. Drops it to Gibson. Gibson catches with his hands. Comes back, catches the ball, then does a little hook on it and takes off running all the way down to the 26. 30-yard gain, and if you get a chance to watch that, that was a beautiful route by Will Gibson as he does it, just a sideline, just will fly up the sideline, runs his defender off, turns, and the ball is delivered there, and he picks up yards after the catch. Nunez goes back again, looks to his right, looks to his left, realizes he hasn't gotten anything, pulls down, gets a gain of two on the play. 
and we'll get a timeout because a helmet came off a player. So you have to wait for the player to come off the field with 5.51 to go. It's the Hornets 14, the Wolverine zero here on Sportsnet, USA.net. And we have a player down. And I don't know if he's yes, he hurt. Is. No, he's tying his shoe. Yeah, he's tying his shoe. Okay. Actually, excuse me, not tying his own shoe, <laughs> helping his teammate tie his shoe. So second down and eight right at the 28. Nunez keeps it himself, goes up the middle, bounces off one tackle, across the 20. They're going to mark him down at the 20. It's going to bring a third down and one for the Hornet. And that's been their best play off guard to either side to picking up those positive yardage. And Nunez did a nice job of reading Dante Bird, who exploded through the line to take away that option read to Malik Winston. I keep waiting for Cameron Woods to sneak out on the left. He's tight end over here. Give it to Malik. Malik gets enough for a first down. That'll move the chains again. And it's funny, you, if you, it's interesting you bring that up because remember the very first series, Woods was open in the seam. And they haven't looked for him again, no. have they? I think they think, okay, one time didn't work. We're not going back to it. Malik Winston back in the backfield. Nunez the quarterback. Cameron Woods tight end to the left side. Tony Cabroy, far side. Nunez looks across the middle of the field. Almost throws it to a Wolverine. And it's an incomplete pass. When you mentioned that, Mark, he got both his hands on that pass. So there was an excellent opportunity there for the Wolverines defense to come up with a really badly needed takeaway. Franco drops it. So Darian Fletcher now comes to the near side of the field. Koenig in the slot, far side of the field. Cameron Wood saying, where do you want me to line up at? Right off the tackle's hip is where he is. Nunez at quarterback. Malik Winston running back. Second down and nine for the Hornets. They hand it. No, it's Nunez faking it. Great little fake there because Malik just carried it out. That allows Nunez to get to the outside. Rushing was number 11, Brandon Nunez. So now Nunez brings up, it's going to bring a third down and a long five for the Hornets, and right around the 15. Third down. Third and six. Aiden Marquez now comes. Marquez comes out to the right side. A lot of tight ends in there. Malik Winston, deep set at running back. Nunez fakes it, goes back. Throws it out in the flat. Cameron Woods sneaks in for a touchdown. Nothing sneaky about that, Mark. He bowled himself into the, in there for a touchdown, touchdown made contact yes. at the four, and continued on to get into the end zone. But what you like about that, too, is how he sells it. Ends up going with the block, making sure that his guy is there. Then he releases it. And you look at Nunez. He waits until both guys commit towards the backfield to just lob it right over top to Woods. If Woods doesn't sell it, one of those guys drops back into coverage, and it's a much tougher sell. Well, the thing that's interesting, guys, they had three tight ends in that game on that set there, and they get on the board one more time. With 3.48 to go, it's the Hornets 21, the Wolverine 0 on Sportsnet, USA.net. Hey, Scott. Scott Giles up here with us. Athletic director for this Fuller to College Hornet program. Every time you come to a Hornet game, I don't care what the sport is, you will see the man to my right there, Scott Giles. He's got, a, he's got a body double, so if he's is that here, what it is? That's what it is. He's in more two places at one time, maybe three at once. Is that? Does he have like cardboard posters where it looks like he's standing up here next to us with his Actually, hands on his hips? He just places them up there and strategically far, far away so you can't really tell. You know, I was going to do that with Ryan and Corey, but I found out the price of cardboard and I couldn't afford it. So uh, that's why I actually bring them out to games with me. Scott Giles over here. Ryan Osborne following his fan club here on sportsnetusa.net. So the Hornets, who staggered their way through that first quarter, have now found a rhythm here in the second quarter. 
taken all the way back there. Jackson, I mean, Fullerton just went head hunting. And that tackle was by Carter Kamana. And Jackson's laying there. Let's hope the young man's not hurt. Yeah, and I, I'm not sure that was, Honestly, he went too high on that, and I don't know if he went helmet to helmet, but he did go high and connect with the helmet with his shoulder pad at least. I'm not sure that shouldn't be 15 more yards given to the Wolverines. So with timeout on the field, it's Fullerton 21, San Bernardino 0 here on Sportsnet USA. Dot net. Don't forget we have water polo on our sister station, 90.1 KBPK, and a little women's volleyball coming up next Wednesday night on 90.1 KBPK. Of course, you look at the water polo team for the women. Some of us are proclaiming that they should be touted as the best team in the nation. Uh, you know, maybe others don't think that, but I tell you what, I'll take that big step forward because I got picked on at a broadcast by somebody standing next to me wanting to know if I put a jinx on the team. I you think they what? are the best team in the nation. The SportsnetUSA.net water polo rankings <laughs> officially <laughs> have them as the number one team in the nation. Yeah, I mean, it, Ryan, look at them. When you look at every one of their – their top scorer's got 45 goals. Your second top scorer's got 40 goals. Your third top scorer's got 35. Then you've got the top stealer on the team, Adriana, that she's got out there, Wong. She's got 38 steals on the team, and she was hot as a hot fudge Sunday this last match that she had. I think she had five goals going on as the player gets up, and the young man is going to make it off. Well, Corey, he's up. We'll see if they, he gets off the field on his own power as the coaches and the trainers for both teams are on the field. So that's why we have a delay. He does get up. Keeping up for number 15, DeMarco Jackson. And it looks like slowly walking off the field. We're going to hope the best for this young man as he comes to the sideline. So it'll be first down and 10 at the 15 for the Wolverine. 3.42 to go. Here in the first half, it's the Hornets 21, the Wolverine 0 here on Sportsnet, USA.net. DeMarcus Avery Jr. comes out at quarterback. First down, Wolverines at their own 15-yard line. Hunter Beitler in at running back. First down and 10 for the Wolverines. Beitler goes in motion. They click the middle of the field. Ball was there. Looked like it would get caught, but it's dropped by David Pollard, who I thought should be able to pull it in. Yeah, David Pollard had the ball, but again, he heard some footsteps coming in three different directions of Hornets and took his eyes off the ball, and you come up with an incomplete pass. Good play design as every pass looking to go to the outside in the first quarter and a half. This time they look outside, come back to the scene. So they flip things over. Pollard goes to the far side of the field. Second down and 10. Hand it off to Beitler. Gets the line of scrimmage. Gets gain of two on the play. It's going to be two there. So... Beitler gets a gain of three. It'll be third down and seven. Three-yard gain on the play. That brings up third down and seven. Third and seven from their own 18-yard line. Ramsey over here. Looks in Ramsey's direction and over shows, throws Ramsey. Not even close. Ramsey's going one way. Quarterback goes another way, and it's going to bring up a fourth down. And, Corey, you, you've seen it before with young players. When you haven't been out there to play, you've already talked about it. You've got to get a rhythm to the game. You've got to feel what your other player is going to do that you're going to try and get the ball to. Yeah, and especially when some of these players are playing offense or started out on defense, coming over to the offensive side of the ball. Again, there's no rhythm there. 
C.J. Broy is going to stand at the 50 for the Hornets. They're up by three touchdowns. Ball is hopped. It's going to go in the end zone, and it's going to be safety for the Hornets. Now that one, he had no chance. I mean, that's the second rolled snap for the Wolverines tonight, and this one hurts him with the two points. So it's now the Hornets 23, the Wolverines zero here on SportsnetUSA.net with 2.40 to go. So special teams gets on the board. Defense has gotten their turnovers. Offense has found a rhythm. And so if we could replay the first quarter, the Hornets might say, okay, we're warmed up. Let's get ready to go. It'll be a free kick by the Wolverines at the 20. And you have the option, you can either punt it or you can put it on the tee and kick it off. You could drop kick it if you want to. And just like a kickoff, the ball is live. Deep kick. Taking it to 30. Up the middle, to the outside, off and running. All you have to do is go one different direction. All the way down on a great return by Michael Love, who I thought for a second, Ryan Osborne, if he cuts one way or the other, might have been in for a touchdown. Yeah, Mark, he had that entire left-hand side open, so all you had to do was just get that one more move. Even though Corey says no, I'm correct. He had that left-hand side wide open for a for the end zone. He did have that left side wide open for the end zone, but the problem was it was not so wide open. Prezan Norman was there. He saw it wide open for the end zone. Yeah, he saw it, but it just wasn't there. But I also want to give credit to his blockers as well at the 45-yard line. Each and every person found their man really early, so it gave Love a really easy opportunity to see what he was presented with in front of him. First down and 10 at the 25. Nunez goes back, has time. He's going to take it down himself, fakes it, runs to the 10, cuts back in, dives all the way down to the 9. It'll be first and goal at the 9-yard line for the Hornets. Nunez loses his helmet, so he'll have to come off the field, and that means Taj Gregory comes into the game now at quarterback. Malik Winston at running back. Franklin to the near side of the field. Koenig in the slot. First and goal at the nine. Taj Gregory and holds on to it himself. Dives. They're going to mark him just short. It's going to be second and goal at the one for the Hornets with two minutes to go here in the first half. It's the Hornets 23, the Wolverine zero. Hornets come to the line of scrimmage. Russian was number two. Gregory takes it himself. Touchdown, Fullerton. Touchdown, Hornets. So with 144 to go, it's now the Hornets 29. The, the Wolverines zero here on Sportsnet USA.net. Ryan Osborne, Corey Nalen, and the old guy calling the action. Ryan Osborne, once again, now everybody seems to be on the right page for the Hornets. Now I'm going to start off with William Peroni on that last um, on that last play for Fullerton College. You see him immediately get that snap off and find a guy to move over to the left-hand side. That's what opens up the hole for Taj to be able to run through because he's able to pick someone up and immediately move them off his hip. He gets squared to that hip, pushes them off to the side, and it opens up that right-hand option. Fulbert makes it through. It's now the Hornets' 30. The Wolverine zero with 1.44 to go here in the first half. Well, the Hornets now have somewhat of a control in this game here on Sportsnet, USA.net. Rashawn Ramsey 
back deep with Gardner. So Ramsey and Gardner back deep for the Wolverines. Ramsey near me, Gardner on the far side of the field here on SportsNetUSA.net. Gabby Nealon to my right, tucked nice and warm and crispy. So the Hornets up by 30. Little pooch kick in the middle of the field. Backspins, Hornets go down for it. Who's got the football? And I think the Wolverines have it. The Hornets had an opportunity. And we've got a flag on the play, a couple of them. Near side of the field, far side of the field. That usually will be illegal procedure against the kickoff team. Wolverines recovered at the 32. So offsides on the kicking team. Hear that from the white hat up there. So, offsides on the kicking team. And it's going to be tacked on at the end. So at the end of the recovery, and it'll be a first down for San Bernardino at the 37 yard line. I'm gonna say, where's the official going? It looked like he was out on a walk with us <laughs> here on SportsNetUSA.net. Demarcus Avery Jr. comes back in at running back. Beitler at, uh, comes back in at quarterback. Beitler running back for the Wolverines, trying to find something. Avery, Demarcus Avery Jr. takes off running for his life, was gonna fling it up, he does, out of bounds, nobody in the vicinity, but he's outside the pocket, so they will not throw a flag. And we have a Hornet, Corey, limping off the field. That's Tyler Carter, out of River Rouge. But Mark, Corey, would you tack that on to a little bit of maturity at the core, at the quarterback position there for Avery? Because what we've seen often, at least in the first four weeks, are guys who will just run it out of bounds, end up losing two or three yards, and just reset at the line of scrimmage. But it's negative yardage as opposed to this. He knows he has no one in the vicinity and is out of the pocket, throws it away, and keeps it at the line of scrimmage. Well, and he beat the pressure that he's seen all night. So second down and 10. Here comes the pressure again. This time he goes out. Looks to go in the flat, throws it to the wrong side, and his receiver, Rashawn Ramsey, has no opportunity to bring it in. Well, the opportunity was to be a deep out pattern, which Avery Jr. was on that pattern. Ramsey was on an out and up pattern, so when the ball is delivered, he's on his way up, and another miscommunication on that pass. Ramsey stays to the far side of the field. Tinsley over here to the near side of the field with Pollard in the slot. Third down and 10 with 122 to go here in the first half. It's the Hornets 30, the Wolverine zero. Here comes the pressure. Throwing it out into the flat and overshoots. Beitler, the running back, coming out. And that was the pressure that made him overshoot the runner coming out of the backfield. Yeah, Beitler had, had a step on the linebacker on the outside, and that was Joshua Little. Not much of a step, but he's had one. If there's a good pass there, he might have scooted for a first down. But nonetheless, another punting opportunity, or another punt by the Wolverines. C.J. Broy will stand at the 30 for the Hornets with 1.17 to go. The Hornets discovered 30 points in this second quarter. Comes the pressure up the middle, ball gets away. Broy's gonna let it hit. It bounces at the 30, rolls down, trickles its way down to the 19, and will be downed right there. With 1.05 to go in the first half. It's Fullerton College 30. 
San Bernardino Valley College Zero here on Sportsnet, USA.net. Ryan Osborne, Corey Nealon, Gabby Nealon, and the old guy, happy to bring you this Fuller to College broadcast on SportsnetUSA.net. The lovely campus of San Bernardino Valley. I mean, this is a nice campus, gentlemen. We had a chance to walk around, and we were impressed, especially with the uh, athletic facilities here. Yeah, it'd be a good place to come if you were going to build something on your own. You may want to come and look at something like this and get an idea. Nunez goes down the deep side of the field. Koenig says, touchdown Hornets. 81 yards. One play on the drive. And Koenig just got past touchdown his defender Hornets. on that right side. And easy. That's one of those throws where Nunez, all, all he has to do is make the completion. And Koenig's speed does the rest. Brandon Nunez to number 12, Eden Koenig. Once again, an 81 yard touchdown reception from number 11, Nunez, to number 12, Koenig. Sure hands. Fourth touchdown of the season. It's gonna be interesting to see what his stats are at the half. Bo Bear, mishandled snap, but he still gets it up. So with 52 seconds to go. And why three old men bemoan no offense in the first quarter. Well, guys, the lights are on, the engine is purring, and they've got it in fifth gear right now in this second quarter. As bad as it was in the first quarter, and believe us, it was bad. In the second quarter, they looked just that good. And I'm going to say four receptions, 130 yards. Braden? You know yeah. what? That sounds about right. We'll get the official stats at halftime. That was official. Okay. <laughs> it was officially Corey's. The official Corey Nealon stats here on Sportsnet, USA.net. Write them down. Put them in the books. Let us hope one thing, though, guys, that one of the best running backs in the conference and maybe in the state, let's hope he wasn't hurt that bad when we saw him come off the field. Yeah, because you're not seeing him again tonight. We're going to get another flag against the Hornets. Fair catch inside the 10. So that's going to bring it out to the 25. Well, look at the Hornets are going, wait a minute, what are you doing? Where are we going? The officials are all looking at each other. They bring it out to the 25 and then add five more yards to that. And there we go, to the 30. Offsides, Hornets. First down, Wolverines at the 30. So now if you're a Wolverine fan, you're hoping that some offense shows up with DeMarcus Avery Jr. at quarterback. Young man forced into this game, looking for something, and there's just a head-on collision, Mr. Nalen, behind the line of scrimmage. And that was Bryce Dunnick. Again, solid interior. And that was Williams that got laid back there. They go back again. Quarterback looking, dances his way, sidesteps. Puts a little move on and gets run out of bounds at the 40. Nice moves by this young man that can run at the quarterback position. Yeah, position was Michael Nedro was in position at the linebacker for the Hornets. And Avery Jr. just ah, said, you know what, I, I'm going to leave you and pick up that first. What's really impressive about that cut, too, is that it's on his inside foot. He was able to dip the shoulders and cause the linebacker to commit on it off his left foot and then cut off over to his right. Jamar Williams stays in at running back. Avery Jr. out there, Rasheem Ramsey goes to the far side of the field. In the slot next to him is going to be Pollard. Avery Jr. looks, comes over this way, missed tackle, 
across the 50, down to the 40, and a nice catch by Rashawn Ramsey. I'm not sure what Jordan Rashawn Little if he was going for the tackle or the pick. Either way, Ramsey picks up the first down, and there's a timeout called by the Wolverines. So with timeout and 37 seconds to go in this sec first second quarter, first half, it's the Hornets 37, the Wolverines zero here on sportsnetusa.net. Well, guys, with 15 seconds to go, let's line up the bombs and let them fly here on sportsnetusa.net. Yeah, and when you take a look at the Wolverines, they take that timeout because there's 15 seconds left on the clock. And if you're San Bernardino Valley, a huge momentum builder and also confidence builder as well would be if you get some points off of this drive. You've already seen two pretty good dynamic plays there from a quarterback and a wide receiver to get yourself into good field position with 15 seconds to go. And you have a timeout in your pocket. For San Bernardino Valley, this is going to be a crucial opportunity for them to get points on the board before the half. Yeah, and Ryan, it really is crucial. I think they need mm -hmm. something to give them an upbeat First feeling going in at halftime. I fling it, baby. I fling it. Avery goes back. He stops. Here comes the pressure. Throws it. It's going to be out of bounds. And one thing, too, for the San Bernardino Valley squad, Mark, if they're able to get points off of this, realize they're facing a top eight team in the state of California, possibly even a top 12 team in the entire nation right now. So for them to go out there and get some points here before the half would not only be huge for their own momentum in this game alone, but also that confidence going forward. Yeah, and you've got a young man at quarterback now that looks like he's gonna be the guy that's driving the ship for the Wolverines. He's got to find something to get going. He's going to roll out again. Here comes the pressure. He spins away from one, taken down at the 50, and the clock ticks down to two. We get timeout on the field. That's the Wolverines' timeout. And again, that, that's Bryce Dunnick who gets credit for the sack, but Carlos Torres, Blake Hill was also in the backfield for the Hornets. And Again, just when that momentum on this drive is going for the Wolverines, that defensive line for the Hornets, we talked to Coach Robinson, said they should have a good game. They come up here and make a big play. Really nice turnout here tonight. And I've got to wonder if everybody across the way, if they're from the Fullerton area, quite a few people then turned yeah. out yeah. If, they're, if they're the Fullerton fans over there. And that's what we've seen consistently over the last three weeks. I mean, going back to that College of the Canyons matchup where we looked at everyone on the near side of the field, the far side of the field, those who came from the Fullerton area made a – Big time opportunity for them to have attendance over at College of the Canyons because that's a long drive when you take a look at it and they were still able to go out and support community college sports. And last week at home in Fullerton, we saw a nice crowd on hand from both sides. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, if you're looking to watch some great student athletes come out to all the community college sports, hey, 90% of the time you're going to be able to walk in and it's going to cost you less than you think it would and you'll get to see some wonderful student athletes show you how good they are on the field in their sport as Avery says, fling it deep, Mr. Pavlovich. That's what I did. Almost intercepted at the five-yard line. And that brings us to the half where the Hornets at halftime are up 37-0 over the Wolverines here on Sportsnet USA. Dot net. What Koenig have in the first half? Five for 155 wow. and two touchdowns. Wow. And notice, Mark, most of that was in the second quarter. Yeah, I mean, uh, you, you got to love Aiden because Aiden's one of the few that will go across the middle and doesn't worry about getting laid out, uh, and especially when you're playing with three quarterbacks. Guys, that says a lot. You're playing with three quarterbacks. That takes a lot of courage. You got one quarterback, you trust them. You know they're not going to sell you out. You got two guys you're not used to, and you go across the middle. You know what? That says a lot about the receiver that will go across the middle, not worried about it getting his clock clean by anybody defensively. So we get ready for the second half as the Hornets are up 37-0 over San Bernardino Valley College here on Sportsnet, USA.net. Ryan Osborne, Corey Nalen, the old guy, Gabby Nalen, 
here out with the game for us tonight. Scott Giles was up for a little visit. Of course, Ray, we saw Jerry today. He wanted to say hi to you. Down there sitting to it next to our defensive coordinator. I think Jerry was adding a little strategy. Jerry's out here for all the games for the Hornets. As San Bernardino will receive the kickoff to start this second half. Rashawn Ramsey to the near side of the field. Far side of the field, Gardner. Both of them standing yeah, at the 10. Let's get ready for the opening kickoff of the second half. Now, Ramsey comes off the field and his brother comes on the field. So Ramsey to Ramsey. Ramsey picks it up at the 10. Fakes a reverse, looks for a block. Tries to get the outside, gets to the 20 and that's where they're gonna take him down at. They're gonna mark him down at the 22. Brought down by Anthony Wilson and Joshua Little. Both stay on the field as they'll start the second half in the secondary, along with Keon Marshall in the middle. And we'll set the rest of that defense in just a moment as we have Max Joseph as the other safety with Wilson. Up front is Torres, Dunnick, Harris, and Heal. Ronald McFoy is the far side corner. Avery Jr. back in at quarterback. Beitler running back. First down and 10. Avery Jr. looking to go to the middle of the field. Can't get it. Once again, throws an incomplete pass, and that was going to go to Rashawn Ramsey. And Mark, sorry, Joshua Little is the... Linebacker in, Jordan Little is the corner. So 49 is Joshua, 27 is Jordan. Luke Smith also in the game as a linebacker. He had a sack and a tackle for loss. Wind picking up just a little out here. Nice night in San Bernardino. Avery goes back, feels the pressure, dances away from one, gets away from another one, cross the middle of the field, side arms it up to the 25. They're going to mark it down at the 24 with Corey Nalen's going to say, uh, well, you're going to call it a horseshoe collar? Yeah, I was going to call it a horse collar tackle. Keon Marshall did a nice job of coverage and bringing him down, but he had him on the back of the shoulder pads. Actually, he had him by the horse collar and brought him down, and that's what the uh, coaches for the Wolverines were saying as well. Every junior stays in. They're only going to give him a gain of three on it. So it's gonna bring up a third down and six. Avery Jr. goes back, here comes the pressure. He goes to the outside. He's gonna fling it up towards the middle of the field. Incomplete pass. Trying to come back to bail out was David Pollard on the route to help his quarterback and he couldn't get there. There is no help for the quarterback if you're gonna to continue to run these deep 20, 15 to 20 yard outs and ups. It's just not gonna happen, he doesn't have the time. So Will Gibson comes out for the Hornets. Look at Gibson. Punt returns, he's returned one for 20 yards this season. He's gonna stand at the 45. Here comes the pressure, almost blocked. Gibson's gonna let it roll. Then he picks it up in the hop. Goes straight up the middle, straight arms. Refuses to go down, gets taken down at the 46. And if it kept rolling, guys, it could have gone all the way down to the five. Ryan Osborne, he did the right thing. He's been listening to you here on SportsNetUSA.net. And that's one of the keys is that you can't just go into it thinking, okay, I need to get it off. You have to put a lot of leg into the top of the ball so that way when it does hit, it has the ability and momentum to keep rolling forward. If you don't put enough leg into it, what will happen sometimes is it'll take the first couple bounces, pop straight up into the air, and then come backwards. You need to put enough leg into it so it keeps going forward. Nunez comes into the game. Had a great first half when you look at his numbers. Started off shaky, but then balanced it out. Malik Winston in at running back. Nunez says, middle of the field. One more time. Nunez down the middle of the field and drops it there to Fletcher. Fletcher spins one way, dances another, goes the outside, backs up the truck, and finally unloads everything down at the 15. And Fletcher, who ran 100 yards, picks up 
a big first down for the Hornets. He ran 100 yards to pick up 30. And a nice play, Darian Fletcher, his first catch of the season. Fletcher out of Manor, Texas. Manor High School. New players we haven't seen before in the ball game, Mark. Adrian Marquez now to the far side of the field. Nunez goes underneath center, hands it off to Malik Winston, goes the outside. Malik refuses to go down, trips just before he gets in the end zone. A run up, and I'm going to see where they're going to mark it. I've got him at a run at 12. I want to see where they actually First mark him point. at. Looks like they're going to put him at the two. And so it is a run of 12. It'll be first and goal at the two. And the lead blocker is Kablin Shelvin. First and goal. Up front. Let's see if there's a quick handoff to the fullback. Hand it off to Malik. Goes straight up the middle. Should be a touchdown for the Hornets. It is. So with 12, 25 to go, it's now the Hornets 43. The Wolverine Zero here on Sportsnet, USA.net, and we get a flag. And, and we, I'm thinking, of who, who was that against Ryan? Was there something going on down there that I missed? Too there much was, talk. Yeah, there's a lot of talking and a little bit of a scrum afterwards as well. So both teams just kind of letting the emotions run high. And, and Shelvin did a nice job of clearing out. And they're picking up the flag. So on Which either team. I personally like because both teams were drawing back and forth at one another. No reason to just toss that flag. Just let them move over to either sideline and keep the game moving. They spot the ball. The kick is up. And the kick is good. So now it is Joseph Delaney that came in for the point after. And Delaney makes the point. So with 12, 25 to go, it's the Hornets 44, the Wolverines zero. Yeah, I understand what that's like too. It's like, you know, when you're standing up here and you're talking to your co-person and then the next person walks up with a big old slice of pizza and he's waving it around at you like a flag. So we know what that goes. And so the Hornets now have put up 44 against San Bernardino with 12.25 to go. So we should see a lot of new faces coming in the game. Ramsey is gonna be back deep, standing next to Gardner again. And that's Raheem Ramsey towards the near side of the field. So Raheem and Gardner heads towards Raheem. Ramsey takes it at the 12. Goes up left side. Ball comes out, but Ramsey falls on top of it and is marked down at the 25. So 12, 19 to go here in the third quarter. And now the Hornets are feeling comfortable, and we'll see how many new faces may show up on the field here on Sportsnet, USA.net. Corey Nealon might have to reset the entire defense for it. Taden Smith is one safety out for the Hornets. The other safety is still Maxwell Joseph. Jordan Little, the corner, far side corner is Ronald McFoy. Joshua Little, the right side linebacker. Avery Jr. comes out. Williams at the running back. Hands it off to Williams. Williams goes off left tap, gets up the 30, gain of four on the play. Michael Nidro also in there, but that tackle was made by middle linebacker Diego Diaz out of Frisco, Texas, Memorial High School. Robert De La Torre, Tyler Carter are the nose guard, nose tackles, nose guards, and the edge rushers on the near side is C.J. Nesmith on the far side. On that right side is Kennedy Jr. Avery throws it out here, gets it quickly out to Tabon Tinsley. Tinsley refuses to go down, finally gets tripped up at the 49-yard line. Got a flag down, roughing the passer against the Hornets. So we'll tack on 15. And Tinsley did a nice job of breaking the tackle out of uh, from Jordan Little. Gets. 10 more yards after that contact brought down by Diaz. That was a 19-yard reception once again. And 
after the penalty. First down, Wolverines. So Avery Jr. stays First in. Williams at the running back. Tinsley in the slot on the near side of the field. Ramsey outside him. Rashawn Ramsey on the far side of the field. First down and 10, right at the 36 for the Wolverines. Avery Jr. looks things over. Keeps it himself, dances at the line of scrimmage. Looked like it was all face mask, no flag on the play. And now flag comes out. Now it's Nidro who had a face mask out of La Mirada. So my eyes did not deceive me. We're gonna add on another 15 <laughs> yards against the defense for the Hornets. Takes it down to the 24, first down and 10 at the 24. Ramsey and Timsley stay over here. Near side of the field. Rashawn Ramsey on the far side of the field with David Pollard in the slot. Williams are running back. Every junior double clutches, and when he does, throws it down and away and can't get taken there by Raheem Ramsey on the near side of the field. Got to be more decisive. That double clutch messed up his rhythm. That double clutch made him throw the ball in the ground because he thought the linebacker was going to step in front. He throws out on the first windup, so to speak, a better throw and possibly a completed pass. So Ramsey stays in the near side of the field. Tinsley stays with him. Rashawn Ramsey to the far side of the field. Pollard stays with him. Williams has it faked to him, and Avery gets sucked down by the wind that Williams caused. Yeah, he slipped and kept it, and Williams had a hold if he had, a, if he had been given the ball. Who knows what could have happened. Second down and 12. And that's going to go down as a sack to Robert De La Torre. Third down, now they've got a third down. Avery goes back, he's gonna take it down himself, he's gotta take off running, drops his shoulder, he's gonna be short. They're gonna mark him down at the 14, did he make it? I think he's just short. So it's fourth down in probably about a foot. So Ramsey over here, Tinsley goes in slot on the far side of the field. Beitler now back in at running back for the Wolverines. Avery goes back, throws it up, intercepted by the Hornets. And that's Jordan Little with the interception and I think the Wolverines were, were waiting for an offside because Fullerton jumped and there was no flag thrown. Everybody stopped and stood there. And so that's what they're saying. And, they're, and Fullerton's going to have possession on that interception, Jordan Little's second interception of the season. And I'm like you, Mark. Everybody stopped because Fullerton jumped. They, it looked like they were in the neutral zone. Ball was snapped. Yeah, I mean, it was pretty amazing. Everybody went, okay, he's offsides. Okay, we'll stop the play. And then Avery Jr. decided, okay, is it a free play? I'm going to throw the ball up. Yeah, otherwise you you got to think he was just going to take off running. And we get motion by the Hornets, so that will move him back five yards. And I think... Just going back to that point from both of you about Avery just wanting to throw it down there, thinking it was a free play, because after the interception is thrown, he stays in the pocket, goes to reset himself at the line of scrimmage, yeah. and then looks up like, wait, why is everyone moving around? Yeah, I, it was, I even thought it was offsides too. Gregory keeps it himself. Tosh Gregory looks to turn the corner at the 30. It's a foot race by the big quarterback. Finally gets knocked out of bounds at the 46-yard line. Oscar Franco picks him, pushes him out after a gain of 31, 32, 33. They say 34 yards. So Taj Gregory now in. Garnett Davis the third, the third. is in the backfield with him. Yeah, he's and in there. And also Kavlin Shelvin wearing number 38. 39-yard rush. 
Carter Kamana to the near side of the field. So Carter, one of the young receivers, now is in the game. First down and 10 at the 46 for the Hornets. They hand it off to Gardner, crosses, stays on his feet, gets a pickup of 11 on the play. So Garrett Davis, the third, I'm sorry. Yeah, Garnett Davis is Garnett the guy. Davis the third. Garnett Davis is one of the guys that we talked to on the coaches show who said, you know what? This running back trio is one of the best in the state because he feels that each one of them is learning off one another. So they give each other tips when they're coming off the field. And each one of them, when they come off the field after getting a run, the other person will come up and say, hey, what you need to look for is this hole. Don't worry about it if you didn't catch it, but this is open for you. So Garnett goes off a left tackle, finds an opening, gets a block by Koenig. Can he make it to the end zone? He slows down. Touchdown. Touchdown, Hornets. And that's a good feeling for Garnett Davis Jr. 34 yards on the outside. You mentioned the block by Koenig on the outside. Allowed him to pick up that last 20 yards. But it's a good feeling because we talked to him on the coaches show. And he had this attitude. It's like, I don't touch the ball much, but I don't care because I block well. I do other things. And you said the camaraderie with that running back group, it makes each one of them better. My favorite quote from him was, each one of us would start almost anywhere in the state, but we each make each other better in practice, and that's why we're such a good trio. Ball is blocked, but it was a running flag. I mean, defensive player, this is not going to count, was five yards off sides, and this is coming back. This is coming back because is that, I mean, it really was. They're saying it was illegal procedure. You could watch it. The ball hadn't even moved. The guy was three yards off, and he said, oh, what the heck? If I'm going to be that far off sides, I'm going to keep on going. And, you know, that's what we thought was happening on the opposite exactly, side. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. Same play. But I like what you mentioned about Garnett Davis, Jr. When, when he talked to us, all that. And, yeah, each one of them could be starting anywhere else. But they come here and make up the best trio of running backs possibly in the nation. And that was LeBaron Kennedy Jr. I'm sorry, no, C.J. Nesmith was trying to track him down to make that tackle. You want to talk about sprint, sprint <laughs> speed. He was gaining ground, and he started a good 15 yards in behind the play. 6'4", 215 out of Baldwin, Florida, Baldwin High School. Yeah, but the thing that's sad, guys, is he when he got down close down there, you could see, like some of us, the legs start to go. And, you know, let's hope it was just a cramp, nothing more than that. We'll see if he gets up and walks off without any limp. Well, well the other looks thing. Looks like he hit his nose on that dive. The other thing, too, is when you go for that dive, you're also exposing your chest right to the floor. So when you go for that dive, you hit your chest right to the ground with no barrier in between. It can knock the wind out of you. And that was taken, brought back by Braden Horstman who goes 90 yards for not. Credit to him, too, because he said, you know what, I'm going to keep running oh, until yeah, they whistle exactly, it down. <laughs> exactly. I mean, hey, it looks good on film. But that ball is doubled, and the scrub kick goes through. Guys, it bounces. You catch it, you miss it, and it gets through. And the Hornets are going to go to that wonderful number 51 here on Sportsnetusa.net. So it's the Hornets 51, the Wolverines zero, here on Sportsnetusa.net. Ryan Osborne, Corey Nalen, and the old guys bringing you the action as we're here with 8.03 to go here in the third quarter. Well, it's the Wolverines trailing the Hornets 51 to nothing on Sportsnetusa.net. Cypress Volleyball tomorrow on sportsnetusa.net and then soccer not far away on sportsnetusa.net and of course next Wednesday night a little volleyball on our sister station 90.1 KBPK Mark you mentioned soccer October 21st you'll be out there at Cypress for soccer yes he will An exciting matchup there as the 
Cyprus soccer team, one of the better teams in the Orange Empire Conference, getting an opportunity to compete. One of the better teams in the nation. As the ball goes in the end zone. Four teams from the OEC in women's soccer are in the top 10 in the state of California. You keep saying the OEC is the best be sports conference in America. Uh, absolutely. I'll go there. And you know what? It's not just our sentiment as well. Every time we talk to a brand new coach who joins the not only Fullerton College program, but whether it be Cypress, whether it be Riverside, we've also talked to Santiago Canyon, ask them, hey, what are your thoughts on the Orange Empire Conference? We consistently hear that it is the best sports conference in the entire nation. Hey, we've been saying that for years. Ramsey. Pollard and Tinsley go to the far side of the field. Avery Jr. quarterback. Beitler running back. Goes off left tackle. Gets a 25. We get flags on both sides of the line of scrimmage. We'll see what the call is. 7.54 to go here on Sportsnet USA.net. Little grasshopper visiting oh. us up here in the booth. Local wildlife. The only wildlife I'd like to see. After the penalty, first and five. So against the Hornets, offsides. So it'll be first down and five at the 30 for the Wolverines. Ryan Osborne had a little wildlife uh, visit him at water polo the other day. Gave him a big kiss on the upper arm. Avery sheds one, throws it down. It's going to be short. Nice little pitch forward. And they're going to should mark it down at the 34. They're going to be close to the 35. That's a better catch by Rashawn Ramsey. Well, I want to go to the great vision there by Avery, too, because he's off balance, leaning Check over to his left, and he's able to shovel First it forward Avery. while he's leaning away from the receiver. Yeah, and Ramsey got his hands underneath the ball to make that catch. Demarcus Avery Jr. at quarterback. Beitler at running back. Ramsey to the near side of the field. Ramsey to the far side of the field. First down at 10. Beitler goes out to tackle. Gain a foreign play. Nice running back. Always getting positive yardage when he hits the tackle. Yeah, tripped up that time by Prince Smythe on the outside for the Hornets. Keon Marshall in the middle. Nidro on the outside, Tyler Hansbro, Tyler Hansbro, Terrence Hansbro Jr. on the interior with Ant Harris. <laughs> Second down and Bronx five, Ford. Avery Jr. bobbles it, drops it, ball comes out, recovered by the Hornets. And that's recovered by Prince Smythe. And Mark, Avery Jr. just wanted to do a little bit too much Instead of jumping on the ball, he tries to pick it up again and make a play. You like the attitude, but in that type of situation, jump on the ball, get to third down. So the Hornets come out quickly to the near side of the field. Austin Libias now in the game, and the slot next to him is going to be Sammy, and you say his last oh, name. Oh, Kawasami. There we go. Thank you. I'm sorry, Kawazmi, Mark. Runs straight up the middle. So Sammy, Garnett Davis the third. So Sammy Kawazmi in. So they get a gain of seven on the play. And Demarcus Avery Jr. Mark limping around. Let's hope he's okay. Taj Gregory stays in a quarterback. Second down and three for the Hornets, right at the 23. Gregory takes it himself. Goes to the right side, across the 10. They're going to mark him down right at the 10-yard line. So we'll see if it's first and goal or if he's just short of the 10. Boy, they got him just short. So it'll be first down and 10 at about the 10 and a half. They're going to give him first and goal at the 10. Oh, they are. Yeah. Boy, they have the ball just short of the 10. Even the announcer said just short of the 10. 10-ish. 10-ish. Kamana to the near side of the field. Carter out here all by himself. Run it. 
dipped to the inside, looking for a turn. Touchdown, Hornets. And of course, a new running back in the game, and that was Edwin Udengwu. Thank you. We're a team up here, <laughs> baby. <laughs> Out of John Glenn High School, Norwalk local product. Number His you, first touchdown. Have you talked to him yet, Ryan, on the field? No, I haven't had a chance to. Yeah, I know you're out there with the coaches show, so sometimes you just casually talk to players without an interview. Yeah, it's interesting having the opportunity and ability to talk to the players, not just on camera, but also off camera. That's where you'll get some of the best conversations with these student athletes, and they'll tell you exactly what's going on with the team, what their vision is, what their field vision is. Sometimes they'll even break down plays spot by spot and also vision by vision as well. So you get a real inside look on what these student athletes are facing each and every week, and they have given us the trust as well as being able to not only confide in us what they're watching, what they're seeing, what they're conversing with about their about with their coaches, but also giving us the inside scoop on how this Fullerton College program runs. Yeah, and the, and the long snapper on that play was Noah Ledesma, who you got a chance to talk to earlier. Well, that was today. That was today. So that was earlier. Actually met him in the cafeteria just for a little bit. And one thing about this Fullerton College program is they support all of the athletes that go through this program all together, whether or not they have had a lot of hardships in their life or giving an extra opportunity for student athletes to exceed, to shine. And each and every one of these guys you saw earlier celebrating a long snapper on that far side of the field when given the opportunity. You know, I don't know why I feel like he had a sister on one of the softball teams that we followed. I really do believe that. I'd have to ask Ed Ford as that kickoff goes in through the end zone. Do you guys remember a softball player with that last name? I believe what you're thinking Many. of is Ledesma, the pitcher from Cyprus from a few years back. Is that what I'm doing? Yes. Okay. All right. It's like the Carmona conversation we had last year. You mean Carmen and it, and it, and his and her brother? And new safety for the Hornets, Antonio Hall, wearing number 34. McFoy joins him. Jordan Thompson, new far side corner, number, wearing number 29. Jamari Griffin, number 19, the near side. Smythe, Diaz, middle linebacker, and Nidro are the three backers you see. Torres, Harris, Carter, and Kennedy Jr. Ryan, <laughs> as Williams takes it, goes the outside. Hits the line of scrimmage, cross the 30. And we're gonna take a look to see new quarterback in for Saddleback. Saddleback. No, 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 this San is the Bernard Wolverines. New team playing San Bernardino Valley has a new quarterback. And we were told, Mark, number 12 is not gonna play. Well, we were told he's not on the roster. He supposedly wasn't gonna play, but it looks like now uh, we're down to, as Williams takes it again and gets a gain of five on the play. With DeMarcus Avery Jr. getting hurt or limping off the field, he is not in there now. Yeah, we he wasn't on the roster, and we went to two coaches, and they went, I don't know his name, and he's not going to play, so don't worry about it. Okay, thanks, Coach. Uh and, and Mark, a, 10 times out of 10 that that happens and we ask that question to? We know what's going to happen. Yes. They're going to play. So we'll get his name for you and let you know who the new quarterback is for San Bernardino in this game. First down and 10. Ball comes out. And it's going to be a loss of four on the play. So that's Sergio Alcala at quarterback now. Sergio Alcala. 5'10", 160 out of Colton High School. So Alcala at quarterback. Ramsey to the near side of the field. 
Pollard with him. Alcala hands it straight up the middle. Nice little dive play going to the outside. It's a foot race for Gardner. Gardner down the field across the 30. What a run by Gardner. Cornelius did a nice job of picking up on that outside, and that's what they've been trying to do all game long is to secure that outside and pick up positive yardage. They've only been able to do that with Avery Jr. This time Gardner does the trick. So a call at quarterback, Gardner at running back, Ramsey to the near side of the field. Far side of the field, David Pollard. First down and 10. Hand it off one more time up the middle. This time the Hornets are ready for the run and they make the stop there against Cornelius Gardner. Terrence Hansbro Jr. is there. 6'2", 295 out of Collierville High School. 2.25 to go here in the third quarter. It's the Hornets 58. The Wolverine zero here on SportsnetUSA.net. Second down and nine. Hands it off quickly as we're changing. That's Guns the beater. Fighter, fighter, hands it. Fighter. And on that far side, a beautiful cut back there by Biter. He was able to get past the line of scrimmage and was able to make two guys miss just past the line, five yards out. So Hunter Biter gets another one. So Beitler, you know what's real interesting? Is that is not what the PA guy is saying. Oh, Beitler. Thanks a lot. <laughs> <laughs> sure, first time you said it. <laughs> Akala says, you know what? I don't think his name was Beitler either. I was looking for him. He said, my name's Tyler. <laughs> Tyler Carter. It doesn't matter. And again, another opportunity to, for quick hitters that they're just not doing. They put three receivers in the end zone, and that's just not enough time. So it's going to be a loss of 11. It's going to bring a third down and about 21. Hands it off. Beitler goes back up and takes a bite out of the Hornet defense. I'm here for bad jokes all day. <laughs> so, guys. Don't be surprised if Fullerton College goes full sail on this kick block because they are looking to keep zeros on the board for the first time in quite some time. In fact, if I remember correctly, the last time they kept zeros on the board was against Moore Park when we went up there the last time. Yes. And before that, it had been a previous seven years before. So we come to the end of the third quarter. As we come to the end of the third quarter, it's the Hornets, 58. San Bernardino zero here on Sportsnet USA.net. Ryan, I, I I've got to ask you this. I really mean this. If you were a coach mm -hmm. and you saw a team who unfortunately is not being competitive against you, and they decide they're going to kick the field goal, do you find that offensive? No, I don't. Because if you're looking at it on the other side, you're saying, you know what? They've had a nice drive. They put in their backup quarterback. They get some yardage. They have an opportunity to score. They're just trying to get points on the board right now. So if anything, it's almost a little bit of respect on the other side. You know what? You've had the opportunity to drive on us, and it hasn't worked out to this point, but you're trying to put points on the board, so you get that respect going. Okay, so we'll see. As we get ready to start the fourth quarter, it's the Hornets, 58, San Bernardino, 0, here on Sportsnet, USA.net. The ball will be spotted at the 15. You add on 10. It's a 25-yard 
attempt. And Corey, of course, will see if this will happen. If this comes down to what your holder can do and everything else when you're looking at this and you wonder if it's Dylan Wheatley, the quarterback, another quarterback for San Bernardino, in there holding on this one. And we watched Brian Battress had plenty of leg in practice. High snap, kick is up, and the kick is good. The field goal is good. Kick at the field goal, number 28, Brian Battress. We were talking about his leg prior to this game as well, before going on the broadcast. We were talking about the fact that he was hitting 47 yarders with ease. He yeah. was getting that leg into it, like you were talking about. So not only was he hitting those 47 yarders, he was clearing them by at least 20 yards. Yeah. And so the Wolverines get on the board with a fourth quarter to go. Well, barring the miracle, the Hornets should walk away with a victory in this game. You know. And I like it. You go down, everybody that's up here on the patio heard that line and said, come on, old guy. That's one heck of a miracle. Only Javier could hope for a miracle like that. <laughs> but the Wolverines do what Ryan said you do. You get down there, you have a good drive, because like you said, Ryan, it may pay off on another game, too. Yeah, that's the thing. You're not only getting yourself an opportunity to get points here, but you're getting the confidence going later on. You're saying as a head coach and a coaching staff, hey, we have the chance to be able to go to this later because we did pull it off against a top eight team in the state of California. Ball's going to go deep into the end zone for a touchback. And this is the first conference game for either of these teams. So nobody ever knows what will happen in conference. And let's be realistic. San Bernardino, unfortunately, does not have the full constitution of a team. They're short a few players out there. So I give the young men a lot of credit mm -hmm. out here, Ryan, because we've seen some of the scores. And it takes a lot to continue to come out and to play hard all the time when you feel like the deck is against you. As we hit into the fourth quarter, it's the Hornets 58. San Bernardino 3 here on Sportsnet, USA.net. Yeah, and you, you go back to what you were just saying, Mark. You look at San Bernardino Valley and all these players with the amount of people that aren't able to play here today. And you look at the effort that they put out against a top eight team in Fullerton College, a team that has recently won a national championship, a couple of them in fact. And just the way that they've come out and played, forced some turnovers, have also had excellent opportunities defensively to stop the Hornets. I mean, just take a look at the first quarter. You held a top eight team in the state of California, a top 12 team in the nation to zero points in the first quarter alone. Yeah, the second quarter doesn't go your way, but that's because Fullerton got into a rhythm. But defensively, you're able to hold that team to zero points in the first quarter and disrupt their rhythm completely. That is a huge credit to San Bernardino Valley. Yeah, absolutely. They have played well, to say the least, being shorthanded today. Third down and four for the Hornets. Mark, Ryan, they're bringing everybody. Marcus Taylor, the second help at fullback. Shelvin is the tailback. Hand it off to Shelvin, gets hit, and he's going to be short. So the Hornets are going to have to punt the ball away. And San Bernardino's got a little mojo going here on SportsNetUSA.net. Feeling good about getting those three back quick is going to be Gardner. He's going to stand at his own 35. That is fourth down. And with the crowd that's out here following the San Bernardino team, this is where you want to see that run back. Spark the interest of the locals. Gardner does have that 50 yard run. High kick, it's gonna fall a little short. Gardner's gonna let it bounce away from him, which it does. And they're gonna down it at the 38. 
with 12, 57 to go. It's the Hornets, 58. The Wolverines, three, here on Sportsnet, USA.net. Tomorrow night, Cypress Volleyball on Sportsnet, USA.net. Corey Nalen calling the action on that one. Tomorrow night, they take on the Bobcats, Saddleback. Should be an exciting match of volleyball for the young women over at Cypress College. And then next week on 90.1 KBPK, Fullerton College gets ready for a little volleyball. And again, I think they play Saddleback that night. So back-to-back -back Saddleback volleyball games coming up. Get an illegal procedure against the Wolverines. So Alcala in the game. Sagio at quarterback. A new linebacker Wolfgang Oliva is in the ball game. We're at number 58. First down to 15. Straight up the middle. Keen. Oh, they're going to call it a loss of two on the play. That's Hansbro. Swallowed him up. Rushing was number five, Hunter. With Josh Little, the other backer. Keon Marshall still in the middle. So Beitler loses a few on that play. It's going to bring up a second down and 17, just at the 30. They hand it off to him again. He gets to the 30. A loss of two on the play. And Keon Marshall is there. So move it back again. It's going to be a third down and about 19 for the Wolverines. Ramsey to the near side of the field. Tinsley in the slot on the far side of the field. Third and 18 at their own 30. Gillis right in the slot on the far side of the field. Alcala looking to throw, going deep, almost picked. Incomplete pass intended for number Jordan nine. Thompson was going for the pick. And the TD. Yeah, yeah, he was going for a pick six. Raheem, if he could have located the ball after the tip, he had open greenery, and he could have been off to the races. And then Ramsey almost with the ball turned up, goes up. So C.J. Broy now comes in the game. He's going to be back deep to receive this punt with 11.39 to go. Rugby kick. C.J. Broy is going to pick it up. I thought he was going to go after it, and he backs off. It's going to die right at the 28. 11.28 to go here in the fourth quarter. The Hornets, 58. The Wolverines three here on Sportsnet USA.net. Corey Nalen, Gabby Nalen, Ryan Osborne. Well, we're not splitting that with Mark. They didn't say 527198. Taj goes across. He said, Mark, you don't have. Yeah, I was excited for a second. Upended there by Jaden Bird. I heard a beeper going off. I think that might be me that just won. So we move the chain up to the 40 yard line. First down and 10 for the Hornets at the 40. Up by 55 here in the fourth quarter. Straight dive in the middle of the pile. No gain on the play. New running back is Jared Peters. So Peters 
5'10 out of Hazelwood High School in Missouri. Adrian Marquez to the near side of the field. Peters the running back. First, second down and 10. Handed off to Peters. Dances the outside. Stays on his feet. Crosses the 50. Should be a first down for the Hornets. But he went out of bounds to stop the clock. Nope, nope. Still running. So first and 10 across midfield. First down Hornets. Shelvin now back in a running back. First down and 10. They hand it off to Shelvin. Shelvin stays on his feet, struggles. First down, let's move the chain. Strong running by the 5'11", 220 pound freshman out of Lafayette, Louisiana. 9.36 to go in the fourth quarter. Marquez comes to the near side of the field. Stewart comes with him. C.J. Broy in the slot. Shelvin stays in at running back. Taj Gregory at quarterback. First down and 10. High snap over Gregory's head. Tries to pick it up. Does he get the ball? He does. A loss. About 18 yards on the play. It's going to bring up a second down and 28 for the Hornets. And it's got to be a high snap if it's over Taj Gregory's head. He's 6'8". Listed in the roster. So let's make it second and 29. Just... Just for just for kicks. Nah, 29. 29. 29. Tosh throws a little floater out. Everybody thought, oh, got a chance. Yeah, Marquez's first reception of the season. So that's going to bring up... Uh, Second down. So that should be 16. Second and 16. <laughs> oh, 27. Third and 27. That's what he said. 27. I'm going to say 26. Because I disagree. Taj Gregory says, I'm going deep. And it's out of bounds on a nice little catch. Taken there one more time by Marquez. But well out of play. So bring out the Wolverines looking for some excitement in this last 743. Gardner goes back. He'll stand at the 30. 743 to go. The Hornets 58. The Wolverines 3 here on Sportsnet USA.net. Quick substitutions coming in. One from the right, one from the left. Making sure you've got 11 people on the field. High kick. Going out of bounds right at the 36 yard line. Joseph Delaney, the new punter. And this is what you do not need in a 58 to three ball game. John back and forth at the 33 yard line. The 36 yard line. Yeah, there was a jawing at the 33. Ball is at the 36. Seven thirty-five to go here in the fourth quarter at San Bernardino Valley College. Hands it off to Williams. Williams comes the outside. 
Gets a gain of 10 on the play. Be a first down. First down, Wolverine. Strong running by Williams. And he's done a nice job, in, a good job in the second half of running hard, getting to the outside. Jordan Thompson with the tackle. Kala at quarterback, Williams at running back. They hand it off to Williams again. Cuts inside, stays on his feet, gets to the 50, struggles forward to the 48-yard line. Kennedy Jr. drags him down. Leaves about four yards. Second down and four for the Wolverines right at the 48-yard line. 6.32 to go. Tinsley goes out far to the right. Ramsey here. Hand off one more time. Beitler that time takes it down. We get flag and flag. Face mask against the Hornets is what Mr. Nalen says. So tell me, if you're an official and you, if you drop your flag on top of the other official's flag, does that double the penalty? No, or it just makes makes you think, okay, I got to do something out here. I feel left out. Now we know who can disconnect all the equipment and put it away. No, I'm good. I'm good. I'm young, I'm energetic. Straight up the middle. I'm feeling good. Are you, are you looking good? I'm feeling good, I'm looking good. Well, and, and you, you seem to be in power tonight. I am, I am. <laughs> so it's gonna bring up a second down and 12 for the Wolverines. Corey Nalen is lost in the mood of the night here on SportsNetUSA.net. Big second down. Hand it off again. Defense comes up, makes a stop, plays over, whistles blown. What I think happened to Corey is he went back for some more of that Jamaica Agua from the place that we had earlier. <laughs> it's true. He probably did. You know? Little Jamaica, little lemonade. It was good. Probably ran downstairs and finished off the pizza that was there. We're going to get donuts later. Mark is buying. <laughs> oh. Well, you get, get somebody else riding home with you? Baron Kennedy Jr. Another tackle for loss. Field goal attempt. This is essentially the same range that we saw him kick from in pregame. Longest he made in pregame was 47 yards. And that's exactly where they'll be at, Ryan. They're gonna spot it at the 37. You add 10 on, near hash marks, three steps to his right. The lefty will put a foot into it. The ball is spotted. The kick is blocked. Picked up by Hornets and taken at the 50-yard line. Ball comes out again, finally down at the 47. What happened there, Mark, is there was the block initially, the recovery, and the guy who scoops it up initially gets it knocked out of his hands, goes off his knee, and bounces forward for seven yards. And Tyler Carter was the one who got his hand in there and made the block. And part of the reason why that block ends up taking place is because of the low trajectory of the ball that you have to put it on in order to get that leg all the way out there. Plus, they were set up only five yards back from the line of scrimmage, and that makes it a little bit easier to get that push and into the backfield. Maybe needed that extra two yards on the snap. So we're just under four minutes, 3.54. And the Hornets will probably try to run and hopefully run the clock out to an end. Marcus Taylor stood up by Dante Bird. Running with number 39, Marcus Taylor, the second. 
So it's second down and 10 right at the 48. And we're going to get timeout. San Bernardino Valley. So with timeout on the field, 327. The Hornets are gonna come away with their conference victory to open up conference and put them at one and zero, five and one overall for the season. Right now, when you look at the way things stand, Riverside, Mount Sac are two of the better teams there. And then you have a plethora of teams in that range around five and one. I know Ventura was there, Corey Naylor, when you look at some of the teams, then it's sort of a crapshoot on who goes from where after those first two. Best team in the state and the nation is Riverside. Right now, hands down, 5-0. and oh. College of San Mateo ranked second, 5-0. and oh. Mount Sac, 5-0. and oh. Those are your top three teams. Golden West at 4-1 and one is ranked number four. Fullerton sits at five, at five and one. This is the CCCSIA football poll. Sierra, Laney, Ventura, Cerritos are all four and one. Josh Gregory takes it across the 45. Usually this is the point where we'd also add in the out of town scoreboard, but when we take a look at it, we see this game. We are out of town and this is the scoreboard. Only game happening right now when the CCCAA, if I remember correctly, at last check. So this Fullerton College 58 to three score is gonna stand as the only win for any team in the CCCAA until teams get First back together on Saturday. First down for the Hornets across the 35 all the way down to the 34. And that's Jonathan Sewell. Braden Butte is three and two. And I take that back. At there number are, 10. There is an out of town scoreboard. Moore Park and Santa Ana. Moore Park goes to three and three, 49 to 13. They beat Santa Monica College. Moore Park's kind of having a little bit of a resurgence this season. And here's an interesting one. Bakersfield looks like they're about to take down College of the Canyons. Wow. 17 to seven with 40 seconds left to play. College wow. of the Canyons is gonna drop to two and four. And just look at all the buzz that was around that team prior to Fullerton College going out there and having their matchup and now they have lost, if I'm not mistaken, four out of their last five. Yeah. Second down, four. Hornets trying to run down, out of bounds at the 19 or at the 20. They're gonna put them at the 20 exactly. First down and 10, 147 to go. Here in the fourth quarter and it looks like your Hornets are gonna come away with a victory over San Bernardino Valley College here on SportsnetUSA.net. It's the Hornets 58. San Bernardino three on SportsnetUSA.net. Corey, Ryan, Mark, Taj Gregory goes around the left side. And Mark, before we get out of here, I also wanna thank San Bernardino Valley for hosting us here today. We got a chance to look at their facility. It is a beautiful athletics facility directly behind us. Also being here at their stadium, it has been a really nice opportunity to see what community college athletics has to offer for student athletes out here in this region of Southern California. Especially if you care about your student athletes and you build state of the art facilities or you cannot care about your student athletes and just give them whatever and that's exactly how you make them feel, whatever, as the Hornets turn. Trying to get in the end zone, crawl all the way down to the five with 46 seconds to go on a nice run there by Jared Peters. So we'll see if they just take a knee as we tick, 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 and that's what we're gonna do here in the fourth quarter as the Hornets are walking across the field. So it looks like your Hornets are gonna come away with this victory as a 58 to three victory over San Bernardino Valley here on sportsnetusa.net. Don't forget tomorrow, Cypress College, little volleyball on sportsnetusa.net. We debt sportsnetusa.net <laughs> trying to get out of here quickly 
And of course, besides that volleyball game, East LA Valley football this coming weekend on Sportsnet, USA.net. Excuse me, East LA College. Help me out, guys. East LA College on Sportsnet, USA.net. I get deserted at the end of the game, as we can tell, as your Hornets come away with a victory, 58 to three over the Wolverines here on Sportsnet, USA.net.